What is well-being? When do you really feel well in your life? When do you truly feel well? When you're very happy, you're well. Even if you're physically ill, you're still well, isn't it? Even if you're medically diagnosed as ill, you're very happy right now, you're feeling well, isn't it? So fundamentally, well-being means a certain level of joyfulness, certain exuberance of life. What is happiness? We can say happiness is this, that, but in terms of life, your life energies are happening in a more exuberant way what than it normally happens. Depression means your life energies have become very low and state. Happiness means your life energies are exuberant. There are many ways of describing happiness, but only those who are happy know what it means to be happy. There is nobody who has not been happy. Everybody has been happy, but the problem is they are not able to maintain it. That's all, isn't it? Everybody has been happy. In the last twenty-four hours, how many moments of joy have you known? One, two, three, how many? Maybe you can count on your fingers. Many people have nothing to count. When you were five years of age, a child, how many moments of joy did you know in twenty-four hours? Lots of them, isn't it? Somebody had to make you unhappy. Now somebody has to make you happy, isn't it? The whole equation has gotten reversed somehow. All this effort of life, everything that you do, did, education, career, business, family, whatever you did, everything was in pursuit of happiness, is it so? Everything that humanity has done on this planet is in pursuit of happiness, is it so? In the last hundred years, we have done too much on this planet. With the use of science and technology, we have changed the very face of this planet. Today, we have the kind of comforts and conveniences that no other generation could ever even imagine, yes? What royalty could not afford hundred years ago, today average citizens have, isn't it so? Aren't most of you driving chariots with hundred, two hundred horses? Yes, even kings could not afford this. But are we any happier? We are definitely the most comfortable generation ever on this planet, is it so, physically? But are we also the most joyful generation? So it's not worked. Science and technology has brought enormous amount of comfort and convenience to our lives. Things that we could not imagine just twenty-five years ago are just a living reality today, isn't it? But are we any more joyful? No. And all these cons comforts and conveniences have not come easy, they've come at a tremendous cost to every other life on this planet. Yes, every creature, from plant to animal to everything, including human beings, have paid an enormous price to create these comforts and conveniences and we are not even happy. What is the point? We are literally making a bonfire of this planet. If you are ecstatic, it's okay, burn the planet, it's all right. We are not even happy. I think it's time to really look at it, isn't it? Why are we burning it up? Look at yourself and see, right now, somebody else, if they determine what should happen around you, you feel like a slave. But right now, somebody else, is determining what should happen within you. Is this not slavery? Somebody can decide whether you are happy or unhappy. Is this not slavery? Somebody can decide whether you will be a pleasant human being or an unpleasant human being. Is this not slavery? What happens within you, somebody else determines. This is the worst form of slavery, isn't it? Isn't it so? It is just that, because everybody is like that, it seems to be normal. It is not. It is not normal. Just because everybody is like that, it does not become normal. This human being, life around you will not happen, will never happen hundred percent the way you want it. And it should not happen. Because if everything happens the way you want it, where do I go? Life around you will never happen hundred percent the way you want it, and it should not. Unless you're living with machines, life will not happen and even those machines will freak on you, isn't it? And the machines troubling you every day for something or the other, they do. So, outside will never happen hundred percent the way you want it and if your happiness or your joyfulness or let's not use all these so many words, essentially it is pleasantness versus unpleasantness. For pleasantness, we have many names, we call it peace, happiness, joy, bliss, ecstasy. For unpleasantness, we have many names, stress, anxiety, fear, tension, whatever else, madness, whatever. 
pleasantness versus unpleasantness if your pleasantness is dependent upon what happens around you the chances of you being pleasant all the time is remote isn't it in the very nature of things it's not possible only if you are able to create a distance between this and that it is possible in the sense whenever things don't work there is a habit in lots of people they will look up the whole world is looking up looking up you're always looking up in the wrong direction you're invariably looking up in the wrong direction isn't it so maybe at a certain moment of whatever greenwich mean time zero hours when you looked up maybe you hit the heaven rest of the time you're always looking in the wrong direction isn't it so so in this cosmic space is there somebody who knows which is up and which is down does somebody know huh is there somewhere is it mark this side up nobody knows which is up which is down it's just an assumption isn't it do you know really which is north which is south in the real sense do you know what is north and south it is just for our convenience we just fixed it isn't it yes or no do you know what's east and west no do you know what is forward and backward you do not know none of these things you know there is only one thing you can be certain of right now this is you know what is outward what is inward this one thing you're sure isn't it this is inward this is outward this is the only privilege you have what is outward what is inward this is all you know just in case some day if you get enlightened you will lose that also that's what happened to me now i don't know which is inward which is outward which is me which is not me that's why i'm all over the world because i don't know whether this is me or that is me where do you see me right now within yourself where do you hear me right now within yourself where have you seen the whole world within yourself have you ever experienced anything outside of yourself everything that ever happened to you darkness and light happened within you pain and pleasure happened within you joy and misery happened within you have you ever experienced anything outside of yourself so what i am asking you is what happens within you who should determine how it should happen what happens within you who should determine how this should happen somebody else definitely you should determine what should happen within this isn't it so if you determine what's happening within this your whole experience of life will be determined by you nobody else but you isn't it the events around you may not be determined by you but how your experience of life is on this planet is 100% determined by you if you take charge of this if you leave it loose just about anybody will determine it they will not consciously they also like you by accident how does one manage to find happiness one simple thing is every human experience has a chemical basis to it what you call as peace is one kind of chemistry what you call as happiness or joy is another kind of chemistry ecstasy is one kind of chemistry agony is another kind of chemistry anxiety another kind of chemistry stress another kind of chemistry all levels of pleasantness and unpleasantness is rooted in a certain chemical background within you okay or in other words what you call as this is a certain chemical soup the question is only are you a great soup or a lousy soup okay <laughs> now if i give soup making ingredients to 10 different people mm-hmm. the same ingredients 10 people will not produce the same soup sure 10 soups will taste in 10 different ways though the ingredients are same similarly all of us are made with the same ingredients okay. but see in how many different ways we made ourselves so it's time to pay attention to soup making <laughs> that this is a great soup this is not a lousy soup <laughs> If you establish a chemistry of blissfulness right that's how you will be this is what we are teaching people we are not advising people to be happy or peaceful mm. we are teaching them how to engineer your chemistry the way you want it you create a chemistry of blissfulness then why are you bothered about being happy mm. that's how it will be not a single day passes for me without witnessing tears of joy and love around me every day somebody will be shedding tears of love and joy i don't think there's a better way to live in this world and all of us should strive to create our own circles of joyfulness and pleasantness around us because 
if you are not joyful by your own nature, if you are always going around with the fear of suffering, as long as fear of suffering is there within you, you will never walk your life with full stride. It'll always be half a step. Most human beings have crippled themselves simply because of fear of suffering. What will happen to me is always the question. Whatever happens, this is how I will be. If this assurance comes to you, only now you will want to scale the peaks of life and see what about it. If it happens, makes no difference to you. If it doesn't happen, makes no difference to you. That's when you would like to really explore every dimension of life. So first and foremost thing is this, that your way of being is not determined by what's around you. If you bring this one aspect to you, there is no fear of suffering. Once there is no fear of suffering, you will traverse the breadth and length of this life without hesitation.